Let's talk about creating lens flares in Photoshop, not using the lens flare filter. I'm talking about the good lens flare. So oftentimes adding a lens flare to an image or a graphic or a photo that you're working on can really do a lot. Well, maybe not the graphic part of it, but certainly images and photographs, it can do a lot to help. For instance, this photo, I simply enhanced the flare that was there, but let's take a look at this photo. This photo, I added a brand new flare. We can see there's the image before, there's the image after. We just sort of add this nice wash of orangey backlight as though the sun is up there in the sky beaming light down on her. So let's take a look at how to do this. I'm even going to close this one. Here we have this image of the sun setting or rising over the ocean. It's pretty simple to go ahead and do this. Basically, you create a new layer by adding a new layer and you grab the brush tool. So we've got the brush tool here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to make the size pretty large. Um, in fact, I'm going to go huge for this uh, photo because it's just so stinking big. I'm going to go 1300 pixels, hardness set to zero, and I'm just going to paint once. All right, click once. You can see it's black. I want to switch that to white, so I'm going to go image, adjustments, invert. It's going to flip it to the color white. Great. Now what we're going to do before we do anything else is zoom in on this and ch check it out up close. We're going to go filter noise, add noise, and we're going to add, I don't know, somewhere between three and five percent of noise, uniform and monochromatic. Hit OK. The noise is basically going to prevent this from banding like crazy as we scale it up or down. So I'm going to zoom out now that I've done that, and I'm going to duplicate this layer. So I'm going to Command or Control J as the hotkey, duplicate the layer. All right, now that we've done that, I'm going to set this, I'm going to, or I'm going to name that layer white, and I'm going to name this layer on the bottom orange. And what we can do now is add some color. We're going to add some color to our orange layer. I'm going to shut off the white layer, and on the orange layer, I'm going to go Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation. And we're going to color this by ticking on Colorize, reduce the lightness, right, because it's white, so the only place we can go with it is really make it a little darker, increase the saturation, maybe up close to 100%, and then shift the color to a nice orangey orange color. There we go. You can make it a little lighter if you think it needs to be lighter. I'm going to stick with something right about there, negative 43 I like. Hit OK. And we're going to set this now to the blend mode of screen. And we're going to turn on the white layer, and we're going to set the white layer to a blend mode of linear dodge add. There we go. Now with the orange layer, we're going to go edit free transform right there, and we're going to scale this larger. I'm going to hold down my shift and alt key. That'll be shift and option on the Mac, and I'm just going to pull the orange layer out a bit like that and commit that change. There we go. So now we have our orange layer a little bit bigger than our white layer. Now basically we can select both of these layers by selecting the orange layer, holding down our shift key and selecting the white layer. We can drag our lens flare wherever we want it to be. Let's place it over the sun. Now what we're going to do is make it a bit bigger. So I'm going to hit command or control T. That's the same as going edit free transform. And I'm just going to make this whole thing larger again using my shift and alt key that be shift and option on the Mac just like before and then commit that change so we've made this huge lens flare you can see there's before there's after the problem is this lens flare is so bright that it's really washing out all the color that we have in our original lens flare the true lens flare how do we uh, change that well here's what we do we set our orange layer to screen and we set our white layer to linear dodge add let's reduce just the straight up opacity of our orange layer maybe knock it down to like around 50 percent or so great um, but it's still overpowering and that's because our white layer is so high with the white layer and this is important this is the trick linear dodge interacts really really nicely with underlying content when you use the fill opacity it really begins to behave like the sun by sort of bleaching and washing out uh, objects that are beneath it so I'm going to set the fill uh, light something like, I don't know, 15 or 20. So now we can see before and there's after. And you can see we're really retaining a lot of the original flare, the original color of the photo, but we're getting this nice flare effect on top of it. Still maybe is a little bit too powerful, um, mainly because we already have a flare there. Uh, but something you can just play with, the opacity of the orange layer and the fill opacity of the white layer. Then at this point, you can even select both of these layers, hit Command or Control T again, and like try going right click and distort this and pull the rays of sunlight out across these rocks. Um, just be cognizant of where the center of your sort of new lens flare sun is, right? You can see there it is. And we're really just influencing our lens flare to kick some more color and light across these rocks. And I'm just going to forewarn you, uh, stretching out to a double layer lens flare like this can really bulk up a file size and make it quite huge. But that's it. Now you have a lens flare here in this photo. You can see there's before, there's after. It's a quick and easy way to create a very, very effective lens flare that you can scale up, scale down transform move around and you have full control of the opacity and the way it interacts with the image beneath it that's it for this one i hope you guys have enjoyed it make sure you go check out www.tutvid.com 
for more Photoshop tutorials. Hey, wait, stop. Before you click away from this video, I just want to remind you, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that little like button. It helps this video go up. And going up is what I like. That's what we want to do. If you also have a couple more seconds, go ahead and leave a comment. That's cool, too. That's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, check out either of these two videos right here for more of the stuff that I do. This hand is weird. Right there. Thanks, guys.